For those of you watching at home or who might not have heard, this class actually received their white coats in a drive through in our parking garage. And while that was certainly, yes, <laughs> that was certainly an event that none of us will ever forget, um, I would say this is so much better. As a part of our admissions office, myself and our team have the opportunity to get to know all of you from the moment that you submit your application all the way until you land on our campus as you did. And that's such an honor and a privilege. We are so excited to have that and so happy to be here with all of you. And with that, it is my true honor and pleasure to introduce your founding dean, Dr. Stuart Flynn. Well, you may think I walked up here with nothing written down, but surprise. Um, Aaron stole some of my um, lines, but uh, it's a prevailing theme today for this class. So thank you, Aaron. Um, and I want to welcome everyone here, certainly uh, students, family, friends, and, and others. Um, and I most notably really want to extend our now and new second year medical students, or as we say in the parlance, MS2s. Um, as Aaron said, we did give out white coats in a garage, um, parking garage, a year ago. So we've waited for this day a long time. You have waited for this day for a long time. So embrace it and enjoy it. And I, I know you will and I know you are. Um, I want to just share something personal about this class um, because I don't think it should go unnoticed. I cannot thank you enough um, for the class, the professionalism, the can-do spirit, and the immense resolve you have um, proved to yourselves, to your classmates, to your medical school, and quite frankly to your future. So as many of you know, the students certainly know, <clears throat> they have done everything since well into the recruitment for them to be accepted and come to this school through virtually their entire first year um, by remote learning, or as now the new verb in our society, Zooming. Um, medical school is hard enough on its own merits. The first year in medical school is wicked hard to superimpose a pandemic, not getting to know your classmates in person, um, is just really um, added, added, added um, uh, burden to all of them. One of um, your classmates who will go unmentioned, um, Chris Fernandez, <laughs> stopped by last week and um, he referred to something that I had spent time with you last year by Zoom, and, um, and just if you don't recall, it was uh, an entire week on um, neoplasms of the blood and the lymphoid system, and Chris referred to that as a rite of passage. Um, I've never wanted to be a rite of passage, um, but in any event, that is medical school, but to do it by Zoom and to get it in that fashion is, is, was hard and is hard. I will finish this kind of um, comments to all of you. I, I truly do believe this. I think a year like this last year defines one's character. Um, and I could not be more proud of you in how you have addressed all of this. So very humbly and with my deepest respect, I, I thank you for this last year. I also very quickly, I'm between you and the chancellor, um, so I want to uh, not take too much time up here. I also want to thank um, several people here in the, uh, that are here. First of all, because I won't get a chance at the end to thank them, um, several of our colleagues have spent the entire week preparing this, so I'm not going to mention names, but thank you all for behind the scenes. 
to put on this absolutely stunningly beautiful event. Um, one of our fun founding donors um, is with us today, although I have not seen him, so I'm hoping he's here. I'll get to see him shortly. Uh, Mr. Paul Dorman. So, <laughs> Mr. Dorman's the CEO of DFB Pharmaceuticals. And his gift, which provided the first year tuition to our very first class, um, not only put us on the map instantaneously nationally with some pretty jealous phone calls from other deans around the country, but it also set a nice precedent. Um, and, and so with this precedent, we now have had um, anonymous donors, two donors, fund your class for your tuition this coming year. So, so I wanna thank Mr. Dorman for all you continue to do for this medical school. We would not be where we are without you. And I genuinely and sincerely wanna thank the anonymous donors for an amazing gift for, for you all. Um, the impact of your gift will, um, and the students know this, this will be felt for years, it will be remembered for a lifetime, and I had the distinct pleasure of sharing this news with this class, and the emotion and the joy were just breathtaking to watch this class respond to your gift, so thank you. Unable to join us today, I also wanted to thank Barbara and Ben Lockery, who sponsored all of your white coats for this recoat ceremony. Um, if their names sound a little familiar, and they should, that's the same couple that gave you your stethoscopes last year. So, <laughs> once again, phenomenal friends um, for our medical school. Lastly, I just want to introduce, just for a minute, um, this class through their own eyes. So we asked this class a year ago to try to wipe the slate clean a little bit and share an audacious dream you might have for your career. They're pretty impressive, needless to say, but I want to share a few of them. One was, I want to decrease suicide rates for teenagers and young adults, figure out a way to cure the pandemic of mental illness. Another said, my dream is to become the Surgeon General. I think that's very laudable. I will say I didn't see any audacious dreams wanting to be the dean of a medical school. <laughs> so we will work on that. Another student shared, I would like to achieve that we will never have another patient wait for an organ transplant. Another said, I want to develop a community program that works collaboratively with schools, healthcare providers, and organizations to provide high quality healthcare and health education to all children in our community. And lastly, a student said, I would like to join the ranks of the NASA astronaut program as an aerospace physician and astronaut. So you can see these dreams, and they, they are pretty amazing, or more appropriately, they're pretty audacious, um, span some pretty impressive uh, territory. But I am going to share with you, having gotten to know this class a little bit this year, and I'll get to know them a lot better over the next three, I would not bet against these students and their audacious dream. Let me close by um, having the phenomenal pleasure to introduce the Chancellor of TCU, someone who has also had an, an, an audacious dream, um, namely to start a medical school, and trust me, that's pretty audacious, I'll let him comment on that, but Along with Provost Dahlberg, uh, he and the Provost are just amazing positive forces as we grow and mature. So, Chancellor Boschini, I know you're here someplace.
Thank you, Dean Flynn. And I want to just make a little remark on your comments. I love how you started and you said how difficult the first year is for medical students and how this was even more difficult and how you feel sorry for the medical students. And so to all y'all, I just have three words and that's fuck it up. You are the smartest kids in your class. You always were. I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> Nobody wants a doctor who gets C's and D's. So keep going. You're obviously here. You can do it. And I think it's very... I think it's very popular now in America to mix up being equal and, and, and equality, and I think that's a big mix. You're not equal. You're better than most kids academically. That's why you're going to be the physicians. And maybe some people don't like that. I don't care. But again, that's the kid, or that's the young man or woman. That's the man or woman that I want to help me when I have cancer. And so I would say to you, I don't think you're a better person than the guy or the woman who fixes my car, but I'm just saying that we expect more of you. And that's what you have to do. You've been given a huge gift here today by a donor, and that's a free year of medical school. That's incredible. And so, but that gift's not free, nothing's free. You have to pay that gift back, and the way you'll pay that back is by being an empathetic scholar with all of your patients and actually listening to them and caring about them as people, not just as numbers, not just as an insurance claim. And that's what I love the most about this medical school is we're creating empathetic scholars who will be just much more than scientists. You'll be true doctors in the true form of the word. So congratulations to all of you and to all the families in here. Oh my gosh, <clears throat> you must be so proud. I would love, I, I have four kids, I'd love to have a kid who is standing here today feeling sorry for themselves because they're working so hard. <laughs> this is wonderful. So congratulations to all the family members too. Thank you, Chancellor Boschini. Your words um, and your presence here certainly inspire all of us. As students, as a class, you all came together and made recommendations about who it was you would like to represent you. As second year medical student Sam Syed comes to the stage, I want to let you know that after Sam's remarks, there will be a video that will air. That video will then have a countdown to the moment we'll share together. So in the meantime, in the meantime, we would want all of the students to please stand behind the tables on the inside of the lines along with your balloons so that your families can gather around you for the big moment. We'll give you a second to get seated. Also, I want to have everybody remember there are professional photographers at the end of either hallway. You'll be able to uh, have some pictures taken with your loved ones. Great. Everybody who knows me knows I love nothing more than photos, so I'm glad to see some of you taking that opportunity already. Um, I'm going to turn this over now to Sam and introduce him. Uh, and really want to thank him for being here and thank you all for the honor of sharing this moment with all the loved ones that are here and uh, that are watching online. Um, take it away, Sam. All right, thank you. So it was test week, so I, I couldn't rehearse, so I'm going to have to read. Uh, someone check Dean Flynn's blood pressure. He's mortified that I'm up here. <laughs> I got it. Good morning, family and friends of the class of 2024. I want to start by expressing my immense and sincere gratitude to my classroom, trusting me with this tremendous honor of being the student speaker today at this milestone event. It's an honor, and it's one that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I would also like 
to thank the anonymous donors who gifted the class of 2024 an entire year's tuition and Mr. Paul Dorman for providing a similar gift to the inaugural class. We are incredibly grateful to have the opportunity to pursue our aspirations of becoming a physician in the coming years and it's because of their support. So we're here, finally. We're finally here. This is the, go ahead. <laughs> it's, the, it's basically a rite of passage, you know, one where we are joining the, the marriage between the most iconic symbols in medicine and with that of the lifelong duty of empathy and compassion. It's a moment that not only have all of us been waiting for our entire lives, but our friends and family as well. So we began medical school in the midst of a pandemic. We have learned medicine virtually. We had to create and strengthen relationships with each other via a computer screen. Many of us were placed on COVID timeout during anatomy boot camp. We lacked significant resources. We studied alone. We ate alone. We celebrated alone. We cried alone. We went through snowmageddon alone. We also had classmates endure significant tragedy of some kind, some that we know about, some that were not disclosed. While COVID robbed us of valuable live interaction, it also robbed our sweet friend and classmate Lauren Moore of her two grandparents. And yet, she still inspired us with strength and guidance as she continued through the year with it, her exceptional and illustrated Pibble presentation. Rebecca Sobolewski bravely navigated the loss of her sister, Rachel to complications of epilepsy and somehow continues to show up providing laughter to the class with big smiles that she's known for. And then Madeline Gallagher, well she kicked cancer's butt. So let's <laughs> this year was difficult and it would be easy to stand up here dwelling on the unintended consequences of beginning medical school during a pandemic. But there was also a lot of good that came from this year. For instance, we proved to ourselves that we are resilient beyond measure. Medicine is fluid and we proved that we can adapt with it on the fly. And despite our circumstances, we still managed to come together and forge relationships necessary to accomplish things in the community. We had the Purse Project, we had Academy Four, the Fort Worth Food Bank, the Period Supply Drive, Dana's Footprints, the Mental Health 5K, the Mercy Clinic pop-up, the homeless shelter pop-up, we even vaccinated much of the Fort Worth community. <laughs> Truly, resilience was our vaccine, and this class was vaccinated 100% from day one. And in a way, this ceremony means so much more to me today than it would have this, this time last year. Today, we all know each other's story. We know each other's heart. We know each other's reason for being here. And that's simply because we struggle together. So here in a few moments, when I see Tony's mom crying as he puts his white coat on, or Amber dancing with her sisters, or Amir putting his coat on his dad, it, it's an Arab thing, I, I, I'll feel that. You know, it, it'll mean that much more to me because I'll know what their family and friends are feeling. So really, this day is truly for them, the friends and and family that sacrificed so much in the past for us to be here today. So join me and let's give them an ovation. So before I leave you, I, I wanna really just address my classmates. I'd be remiss if I didn't address them about an element of medicine I have to emphasize, and that's trust. As we begin our clinical rotations in September, we should be mindful that it's a great privilege to possess the knowledge that we do. But that knowledge does not entitle us to people's trust. That must be earned every day by our actions and how we treat everyone else around us. My friend Erin was a brilliant person. She was an attorney, well-educated, personable, respected, and admired in our community. Erin passed away six days ago after a grueling battle with COVID-19. Vaccines had been freely available for months, but Aaron was hesitant to get one. Both sadness and anger has overwhelmed me in a pulsatile wave as I've been left to wonder why this reasonable, intelligent person was less afraid of a virus that took her life than of a vaccine that would have almost certainly saved her. Aaron needed someone she could trust. Classmates, we want to under 
I understand we want to treat diseases, and there's no doubt we will. But here the disease isn't in the body. It's a crisis of trust in healthcare and the relationships between medicine and people. How do we respond when a society itself is blighted by misunderstanding, miscommunication, or neglect? We can't ignore the responsibility that falls on all of us to treat these greater afflictions just as we would a patient. By first, doing no harm. And then, by building trust through patience, compassion, and consistent care that shows not just our patients, but our communities that we're on their side. Class, I'm fired up to continue this journey with you guys. But we need our white coats first, right? <laughs> so empathetic scholars, we've done the work. We have the knowledge. Now it's time to go do the work out there and create body, healthier bodies, healthier relationships, and ultimately a healthier world. Let the countdown begin. Coat means a lot to our families because they've witnessed our journey from the very beginning all the way up into this point. It's just really great to be among such such intelligent, charismatic, uh, well-spoken, and really thoughtful, caring people. And I was actually thinking about this past year and everything that we accomplished as a class, and. It, it's really inspiring that everybody, it seems like, was able to achieve their goals regardless. The whole world was asked to make this sacrifice, and uh, in a way, it was a blessing in disguise while, you know, we really start this journey. We competed, not yet, but we're almost there. More equity and mental health. I don't think that a pandemic has stopped us from having that philanthropy, having that heart, that altruistic nature. And we were able to do that. We did that with many of our initiatives, uh, Dana's Footprints being one. Uh, we helped out over 160 students in the community uh, with providing them with the opportunity to choose any shoe off the shelf of the local shoe store. We also were able to do the vaccine clinic, uh, which I took part in, and that was single-handedly the, the most incredible experience of this year. I was fortunate enough to be a student lead and I had family who were impacted by COVID. And so to be able to help the community and help people get vaccinated was, um, was really important to me. That was the first time I'd ever given a shot to anybody. First time I'd, I'd ever you know, held a syringe in my hand and, and been the one responsible for providing this potentially life-saving preventive device. I know that it's, it's at the end of our year instead of the beginning of the year, but I still think the white coat is important because it's a chance for our families to be there and for all of us to gather as a class and really celebrate the year that we've made it through. It's been a lot of work for a lot of us. We've all worked to get to this point. This isn't something that's just been given to us. A lot of us have put in sweat, blood, tears, and all the sweat equity that you can think of to get to this point. Putting on this white coat means that the dream is still ongoing and the marathon continues. Okay, class of 2024, it's now time to receive your white coats in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, let's go!
Put it down for a second. 